So good morning. I am Maria Rudazarete, and together with Maritel um, Gisbert, we are going to present feminist visualization of the spatial and emotional dimensions of inequality and development of the relief maps model through GIS tools. Our aim is to present the GIS development of the relief maps model, which is a tool for analyzing and visualizing inequalities from an intersectional, emotional, and geographic approach. First, we will focus on the conceptual framework in relation to intersectionality, and then the emotional perspectives to inequalities. Then we will explain the relief maps model and its digital tool to then explain the GIS development. So first, in relation to intersectionality, Building on debates that were taking place within the Black feminist movement in the US by different authors and collectives, the concept of intersectionality was introduced as such by Kimberly Crenshaw in 1989. Crenshaw defined intersectionality as a way of describing the interconnections existing between race and gender in Black women. It has expanded to theorize a wide range of intersecting power structures in a, vari in a variety of disciplines, in including geography. The main arguments of intersectionality are that inequality cannot be understood from a single framework, that the focus must be on the interrelations between different axes of inequalities, also that we are simultaneously positioned in positions of privilege and oppression, and that the effects of our positions vary in relation to time and space. The second issue is emotional perspective to inequality. Political and social research of inequalities is generally focused on the public sphere of life, ignoring emotions as a relevant field for studying inequalities. However, emotions are deeply related to the experience of discrimination and to power dynamics in general, and they can reveal unexpressed or normalized inequalities too. Also, many discriminations related to homophobia, sexism, and racism have to do with emotions such as, hum such as humiliation, fear, or exclusion. But how can we approach such discriminations in a way that shows existing inequalities? Building on these two approaches and feminist geographies, I developed the relief maps. The relief maps are a proposal for collecting, analyzing, and visualizing geographic uh, data on inequalities, emotions, and intersectionality. This is an example that you can see um, here in this slide. And as you can see, it relates three different dimensions. The social, which would be the intersecting power um, structures, the geographical, which would be the, the places, and the psychological, which uh, would be the, the emotions that range from comfort to discomfort. They show the curves of systemic and systematic discomforts due to various positions in diverse spaces of everyday life. So every dot is placed by each individual in a gradation of comfort to discomfort and it's related to emotions such as fear, humiliation, or exclusion. In this sense, emotions here are considered as pointers to inequalities. The name Relief Maps highlights two of the meanings that it has in English. Relief as an accentuation, which would be the hills, the curves that rise up and show the places of oppression, and relief as alleviation or removal of pain, which would refer to the valleys, to those places where oppressive experiences decline, and that culminate with the places of relief. Thus, the concept of relief shows the dynamism and mobility between places and experiences according to the different structures that intersect. And I call them maps because they are a visual and symbolic depic depiction of a spatial distribution and not a representation of data on a graphic. So, how were they done? The relief maps were created as a tool to be used by hand by the participants. First, participants in a research had to reflect on their experiences in every place and their everyday life in relation to their different social positions. Then, they classified the places into four types, which would be the second step, to finally draw their own relief map. This has been used in several projects, but now we have created the digital tool for the relief maps, which has importantly expanded its potentialities. And it has the form of a website, uh, reliefmaps.cat. Uh, uh, the website has two main functions. As a researcher, you can create your own model of a relief map, choosing the categories you want to work with. Here you can see some examples, gender, sexual orientation, age, religious identity. And also you can choose the places. You can use the ones proposed or you can also create new ones. And once you have defined them, you send a link to your participants. And then they can take part on it also through this website. 
Participants have to fill in a form like this, explaining how they feel in every place by each category, selecting the emotions related to it, and situating the dot in a gradation of comfort to discomfort. So here you can see an example of the screen for home and sexual orientation. So how do they feel at home in relation to their sexual orientation? And then a relief map like this one is generated through the website. And it can be seen and downloaded by the researcher together with the comments related to each dot. The data is available in the form of a relief map, but also as an Excel, allowing for a deeper analysis of data, both from qualitative and quantitative perspectives. I encourage you to go to the website and check the video that we have produced to show how the, how the website works. So the relief maps are a proposal for the collection and visualization of data on intersecting inequalities from a geographical and emotional perspective. And they are also a model for analyzing and conceptualizing intersectionality. They are a tool for empirical research on the effects of intersecting inequalities, and they are theoretically grounded on intersectionality studies. Place is here considered as constitutive in intersectional dynamics and a central element that shows the dynamism of power relations. And finally, it's important to know that they are not an end of themselves, but material to be analyzed. That's also why they are not a graphic, but a map or a drawing of the subjective perception of inequality. The third step of the development of the relief maps is through the use of geographical information systems. While the relief maps digital tool provides rich information on intersectional dynamics, it doesn't allow for the construction of maps of specific places. Geographical information systems and social research are still quite separate domains despite the potential of GIS for advancing on social challenges. Following the works of uh, scholars like Mei Po Kwan on feminist visualization as a possible critical practice in social research, we have critically engaged with GIS to develop new tools that can collect, analyze, and visualize big amounts of data on discrimination. That's why Marichel and I, together with Katia Valdez, have developed an app to collect the same information but adding georeferentiated data so we can produce maps of discrimination of a city. We wanted here to present the results of a study that we are conducting with the Barcelona Office for Non-Discrimination. Um, this is a research on, on how discrimination is lived in the everyday life of vulnerable groups in the city. However, due to the uh, um, COVID restrictions, we don't have the final results yet. So we are just going to, to show you the app and some examples of what we, we are going to do. Okay, um, so here, as you have seen in this video that Maricel uh, prepared, the app allows for the collection of data on the emotional dimensions of intersecting inequalities following the relief maps model with georeferentiated data, which allows us to create emotional maps of discrimination of a city. This is a theoretical grand digital development that combines feminist geographies, intersectionality studies, and critical and emotional geographies with um, GIS. And thus, it can contribute to building bridges between generally separated uh, fields of research. And finally, it may also have uh, a clear social impact through informing both policymakers and visualizing how inequality is lived. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you both very much for presenting your work on relief maps. Um, we have some questions trickling in here. Uh, there's lots of love in terms of just thinking of, you know, not only how are you defining spaces, uh, but how this can you, be used as uh, for social scientists and journalism, journalists. Um, 
the first question is just a simple one. We'll start there is, are your slides going to be available anywhere that people can look out for? I mean, yes, we can just uh, put them somewhere, but uh, if you if you want to check the, the website, reliefmaps.cat, you can find like all the information or almost all the information that is uh, available also in the, the slides. That sounds great. I noticed, um, so I had a quick question. I noticed that you could um, pull in some textual information in it into the relief map. Are there ways to also bring in other multimedia like sound or video or um, or images at the, at some point in time? Not yet, but it's it's something I always say that this is a tool that anyone can modify. I mean, it's um, we have um, it based now at the at the university, but we can we can change it uh, with the the person that is uh, working on the on the website. But for now, you can only uh, write. But you cannot, uh, yeah, you cannot add uh, images or, or sounds for the moment. But it's it's something that obviously it would be possible, and it, it would also be uh, coherent uh, with the with the model of the relief maps. Totally. Um, so another question that I was thinking about is, um, so I also do work on feminist mapping, and just the idea of kind of repurposing tools in. Uh, kind of retooling our technologies. I'm curious what the biggest limitations of the existing technology you all came across. And um, yeah, if you have any ideas of like other ways that we can manipulate the software that we all typically use for mapping for feminist, feminist mapping ideas. Um, the most important limitation that, I, that I've found for the creation of the website of the Relief Maps was the, the legislation on, on data protection in Europe, which is really strict. And uh, here, for instance, we cannot ask for the sexual orientation or religious identity, which is something that I think it's problematic in some cases because we don't have data on some vulnerable groups. And, and we have, uh, I mean, it, it was uh, really a challenge for the person that, that was like coding with the, with the website. To, to try to yeah, to to stick to this uh, to this European legislation and I, and I think that it's, it's it's problematic if we want to use uh, if we want to collect data on discrimination because we we have to ask for these kind of things and it should be uh, we have to find the ways to to ask about these things even if it's safe for them to to give this information for the people to give this information I don't know if Mariche uh, wants to say something about the the GIS or the the limitations in relation to the relief map. No, about the GIS, um, the only limitation is the software. Sometimes uh, uh, the, the price is uh, very high and then we prefer uh, use uh, uh, software, for example, QGIS or other software that is uh, without license and for these reasons they are better for us. And for the, the application, for example, uh, we talk about um, the, uni uh, the autonomous uni university uh, to 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 work about uh, all the the all of these um, kind of of um, protections, <laughs> and now we 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 do it a lot of um, summer. Um, a lot of summaries or a lot of documents about to request the, the, the personal information. Great. Uh, there's also a lot of love from these map, map makers about uh, just the metaphor of relief maps. And I think like, obviously if you walk around the map gallery at NASIS, typically you see, you know, beautiful mountain ranges and, you know, whatever else. But I'm curious uh, how you all came to use the metaphor. Um, and then also, um, like I think of, when I think of intersectionality, you typically see like the X, like you have two identities crossing each other, but I'm, I like the complexity that relief brings to it. And so I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, I, I, I use this, this term of the of relief because in English it has these two, two different meanings of an accentuation that would be these hills that rise up where there are some oppressions or some uh, discomforts. 
and then the relief uh, also, uh, as, as we see it in, in Catalan or Spanish, it's like alivio, alojament, which would be this, the, the hills, I, I'm sorry, the hills, like the valleys, where, where there's a, a relief of this oppression, so the places where people feel, feel safe, feel, feel comfortable. That's why I use this term of, the, of relief. And also I know that the, um, the concept of map, if we use it more in a classical way, it wouldn't be a map, but um, for sure it's not a, a graphic. I mean, I, I prefer to call it a, a drawing or a representation of this uh, perception of, of discrimination. Um, but yeah, I, um, I like to, to, to use this uh, other meaning, alternative meaning of relief maps that would be this uh, relief maps of, of discrimination and of inequality from this emotional and intersectional perspective. And, and I think that it's also necessary to create new, new metaphors to talk about intersectionality that allow us to think about the different axes of, of discrimination, not as uh, separate entities, but as, as uh, mutual constituted uh, entities and, and axes. So I think it, it can help uh, or can contribute to this kind of conceptualizations of intersectionality. I agree with that. And I think that's so powerful to not only to be thinking about the metaphors to push all of us, you know, just out of our uh, out of our conventions, and I think just like expanding our imaginations in different directions. Um, so that's what I really love about expanding just the idea of what the map is. That uh, like in an increase in our graphic vocabulary in a way. Um, and um, let's see here, multitasking is not my strong suit. <laughs> uh, do you want to make any uh, additional comments on next steps with this research? We, re we really wanted to show the, the results today, but I mean, all these months, uh, everything has changed. We couldn't collect new data. We just have few relief maps. But we think that within this project that we are working with the Office for the Non-Discrimination in, in Barcelona, and they are using, they are implementing the relief maps as a tool for every person that goes there um, to, to, to say to compliment for a, for a discrimination, then they, they have to fill in a, in a relief map. So we really want to, to analyze this data on discrimination and with the, this um, new development that is the, the GIS uh, application um, to see what we have, but really we don't, we don't have this data. Or we, we really wanted here to show the, the results, but I mean, we could only show the 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 tool and I hope to we hope to have the, the results in the next months. Yeah. Now great. we we want to to collect more data to do uh, for example a uh, uh, three dimension uh, city uh, with the the value of of uh, discrimination. We we have a lot of ideas, but we need the data, and now we don't have the data. Uh, but for this reason, we we developed the, the application to do then all of these uh, of these analyses in GIS. Great, that sounds great. Well, I think that just sets you all up to come back for next NASIS and show us the, <laughs> the next steps. Um, yeah, I think that's all of the questions I have and the questions coming through the thread. And so I just want to thank you both for your work. Thank you for being here with us thank virtually. You very much. Thank uh, you for organizing the session. Yeah, this is a, a, a silver lining of virtual conferences. You both could join us. And so thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. much.